Hello and hola from Palmer 2023 and welcome to the Renters Reform Bill that was released in May 2023. Please stay tuned for your Q&A session. The very first question we are always asked is, do I need to sell my property before the bill comes into force? You probably have heard this is the biggest change to the rental market in a generation and certainly since the 1988 Housing Act came into force. The simple answer is absolutely not unless you are planning to sell anyway. This bill will still allow you to sell your property. It will also allow you to move back into your rented property too. You've seen a lot about this bill on the news and in the press, probably both national and local. So what are the main points? Firstly, it's been called the pro-tenant and anti-landlord renters reform bill. This isn't quite true. There are many points that do favour tenants, but also some very good points, especially around Section 8 evictions, which also favour landlords now. How does the bill affect me if I wish to sell my property or indeed move back into my property? The main point of the bill is to abolish the no fault section 21 notices. These will now be replaced with section 8 notices. But as a landlord, you can still sell your property and you can also move yourself or a close family member back into the property by using a section 8 notice. We also be more powers to landlords where you have tenants that are in rent arrears or say perhaps create antisocial behaviour. So if you had a tenant that was convicted of antisocial behaviour or indeed what rioting, your notice period could drop to as low as two weeks. What happens to tenancy agreements? So assured short hold tenancies or ASTs as they were called will be a thing of the past with all new tenancies being periodic tenancies. This takes us back to a similar system that we had pre-1988 Housing Act. Written tenancies will be mandatory and special terms will be allowed. Tenants must keep the properties in good conditions and allow access for repairs and maintenance. Landlords can indeed get injunctions to allow access to a property if a tenant refuses. Assured tenancies will roll over month by month with either party able to give two months notice. However, the landlord will not be able to give that notice for the first six months of an assured tenancy. In the area that Porters are based, which is southwest London, most tenants are sort of looking for a minimum of 12 or 24 month tenancy anyway, so this won't have an impact on landlords. It may have an impact on student lets and HMOs. We're always being asked, how do I increase my rent or how do we review the rent? Is this still allowed? The simple answer is yes. Rent increases and reviews will be allowed, but only once per year, and you will need to give the tenant two months notice rather than one as we had done in the past. Rent review clauses in contracts will no longer be allowed and we will issue a rent review by section 13 notice. Tenants have to accept this unless they appeal to the first tier tribunal for an unfair rent increase. So at present, all agents have to be members of an ombudsman scheme. This will be expanded so that all landlords also have to be members of an ombudsman scheme. There'll be a new digital, it's called a property portal, but let's call it a property database where all properties that are rented must have a registration as part of this database. So as well as the properties being members of the database, all landlords must also be members of a nationwide database as well. You may have heard of the new decent home standard mentioned within this bill. Let's talk a little bit about this. If you're a decent professional landlord, you're probably doing most of these things already. This applies to the slum landlords that we sometimes saw in the 1960s or the 1970s. So as well as the gas safety checks, the electrical safety checks and the ECPs that we've probably already spoken about, uh, you already probably have your properties. We'll also be carrying out fire risk assessments for each rented property and also a Legionella risk assessment to make sure your rental property is safe for the tenants to live in. Also as part of the decent home standard, you will not be able to refuse a tenant that is claiming housing benefit. However, they still will need to meet your relevant criteria. So this could mean that if you introduce a tenant that has housing benefit claims or universal credit, 
they will probably need a UK based guarantor that can meet your criteria my tenant have a pet this is one of the big questions we're asked daily at the moment so tenants will be given the legal right to request a pet in their home which the landlord must answer within 42 days if you live in a block of flats and your head lease states that no pets are allowed this will be a reasonable exception also if the landlord or a family member has a pet allergy and this also relates to the pet that has been requested this would also seem to be a reasonable However, if a tenant lived let's say in an eighth floor of a large block of flats and wanted the same bird the dog i think this is unreasonable too so we will be applying the rspca guidelines to these requests too just to make sure pets and animals do not suffer in inappropriate properties. How will this be implemented? So there will be two stages. All new tenancies, once the bill comes into force, will become periodic automatically, governed by the new set of rules. All existing tenancies will transition to periodic tenancies on the second implementation date. The industry, we think, will be given about six months notice ahead of the first date, and then there should be at least a further 12 months between the first date and the second date. The renewals that happen between the first and second date will automatically go on to the periodic tenancy option. This Renters Reform Bill podcast is hot off the press, so it is going to change as it starts to progress through Parliament. So if you have any questions, do click on the link below, and we'll certainly be happy to answer any further questions. Once the bill comes into force, don't fall foul of this bill. The first fine is £5,000. The second fine is £25,000 for any breach of these bills once it comes into force. Of course, keep you updated as this renters reform bill progresses through Parliament. In the meantime, don't worry, certainly don't panic. Click another link below and we can send you the free brochure which will expand on some of these points as well. In the meanwhile, be a happy landlord and cheers.